In this segment, we'll talk about the nominal spread, the zero volatility spread, and the option adjusted spread. But first, let's talk about the most commonly used spread measure, which is the nominal spread. And to explain this concept, I am going to use an example from the curriculum, which is based on material shown on page uh, 559 and beyond. You don't have to read the curriculum for this, but but if you do, I think that will just help reinforce the concept. So let's say that you are evaluating a treasury security or a treasury bond which has a coupon rate of 6%. Let's say that it is selling at par which is 100 and the yield to maturity also then is 6%. So this is the YTM. You are also looking at a non-treasury security. So let's say that this is a corporate bond which has the same maturity but it has a coupon rate of 8%. Its price is currently 104.19 and the yield to maturity is 7.4%. So essentially what we are saying, so this as you can see is a premium bond because it is selling above par and the yield to maturity is 7.4%. So again as a refresher, this YTM of 7.4% means that if you hold this bond till maturity, the yield that you are expecting is 7.4%. Now nominal spread is the difference between the yield on the corporate bond and the yield on the treasury bond. So the nominal spread here will be equal to 7.4% minus 6% which is equal to 1.4%. So this spread of 1.4% is telling us how much more investors are demanding for this corporate bond the return or the yield on a corporate bond always will be more than the yield on a comparable treasury bond because it is more risky to hold a corporate bond. Now more specifically, what are the additional risks that an investor takes when he invests in this corporate bond? Very simplistically put, the additional risk over here, so that extra 1.4% or that yield is or the spread is compensating the investor for the extra risk. What's that extra risk? The extra risk is credit risk. This means that when, when you buy a corporate bond, clearly there is a higher chance of default relative to a treasury bond. Second, there is a liquidity risk. So the implication here being that it is possible that the corporate bond is less liquid than the treasury bond and if so investors will demand a slightly higher return. And then finally there will also be a option risk. Option risk being that if this is let's say a callable bond then there is a risk to the investor that the bond will be called and the investor will demand a will demand an extra return. So the simple point to remember is that nominal spread is the difference between the bond that you are evaluating. Here it is this callable corporate bond and a comparable treasury bond and nominal spread is essentially compensating a investor for credit risk, liquidity risk and option risk. You also need to understand a couple of issues with the nominal spread. The first issue is that it does not consider the term structure of spot rates. So does not consider the term structure of spot rates. What this means is that let's say that these bonds are over a 10 year period. So let's say that they are both 10 year bonds. We are not considering the fact that interest rates might be changing over this 10 year period. We are not considering the fact that the 10 year spot rate might be different from the 2 year spot rate. So all we are doing is saying very simplistically that we have a YTM on the corporate bond of 7.4% and a YTM on the treasury of 6% and taking the difference. 
So fundamentally, we are not considering how spot rates are changing over time. And the graph of spot rates over time is called the term structure of spot rates. Secondly, we are not considering the fact that interest rates can change. In other words, we are not considering the fact that the cash flow can change if interest rates change. Recall, since this is a callable bond, then clearly it is possible that interest rates go down and the issuer calls the bond back in which case in which case the investor will not be getting his uh, entire coupon payments for the 10 year period so when we when we do this calculation over here and take the nominal spread we simply ignore the fact that cash flows might not necessarily go on till maturity so you need to understand these two limitations of the nominal spread now let's understand another spread measure which is called zero volatility spread. Now the first point to understand is that zero volatility spread is slightly more accurate than the nominal spread but it is still going to be approximately equal to the nominal spread. So zero volatility spread is also telling us about uh, the extra yield or the extra return that an investor expects to compensate him for credit risk, liquidity risk and option risk. So in that sense, the zero volatility spread is somewhat similar to the nominal spread. The difference, however, is that the zero volatility spread does consider spot rates. So unlike the nominal spread, which essentially does not consider how interest rates are changing over time, the zero volatility spread does consider the spot rates over the duration or the maturity over the maturity period of the bond. Now you don't need to understand these details, but just at a high level, the way you can interpret the zero volatility spread is the, is that the Z spread is equal to the amount added to each spot to get the present value equal to market price. So I think this would be best understood graphically. So let's look at this situation. So let's say that we first draw the term structure of treasuries. And th this is the maturity or time and this refers to the y-axis is the rates and let's say that let's say that the treasury spot rates look like this so this represents the treasury spot rates now obviously the way we value a treasury bond the most accurate way to value a treasury bond based on what we've seen before is we will discount every every cash flow on the treasury bond based on a treasury spot rate and recall from our earlier example that the price of our treasury bond was equal to 100 so in other words if we take every single cash flow and discount it at the appropriate treasury spot rate we should get 100 now the price of the non treasury bond the callable corporate bond let's say that price was equal to so for the corporate bond that price was 104 now the question is this what is the equal amount of spread that we can add to every single treasury spot rate in order to ensure that the present value of the cash flow from the corporate bond will give us 104 and if you look at page 561 in the curriculum what they have shown is that if we add 146 basis points so this distance over here is 146 basis points so if we add 146 basis points to every treasury spot rate then the present value of the cash flow for the corporate bond will give us 104 so the equal amount that we need to add to every treasury spot rate is 146 basis points. 
and this then means that the z spread or the z spread depending on which part of the world you are from is equal to 146 basis points and this is the critical point so again notice that this z spread of 146 basis points is very similar to to what we saw on the previous slide so on the previous slide we saw that the nominal spread is 1.4 percent and here the nominal spread is 146 basis points or 1.46 percent so the z spread will typically be roughly equal to the nominal spread and the z spread like the nominal spread is telling us about the compensation and investor demands for credit risk liquidity risk and option risk now again on the previous slide we talked about two shortcomings one was that the nominal spread ignored the term structure of spot rates but the zero volatility spread addresses that issue because we do consider the term structure of spot rates however the other issue where we ignore the fact that interest rates can change and that based on interest rates changing the cash flow can change that issue still remains with the z spread and essentially the reason we call the spread a zero volatility spread or z spread is that we are assuming zero volatility of interest rates so when we price or when we come up with this z spread we make an assumption about the treasury spot rates and simply add the spread to come up with the with the spot rates for our corporate bond and then we don't assume that these are changing since we assume since we don't assume any volatility or change in interest rates hence we essentially assume that the cash flow will continue till maturity so the second limitation of the nominal spread is also there for the zero volatility spread now i have mentioned that nominal spread is approximately equal to zero volatility spread so what are the issues that cause the slight divergence i don't think this is a hugely important point but nevertheless as long as you understand that there are two primary reasons why there can be a difference between nominal spread and z spread the first is the slope of the spot rate curve so if this is time or maturity and the y axis is the rate if the spot rate curve is flat in other words the one year spot rate two year spot rate three year spot rate is all let's say 6% then the z spread and the nominal spread will be exactly the same so if you look at let this let's say is for treasuries then for the corporate bond you might have a yield of 7% and notice that in this case the nominal spread will be 1% and the z spread will also be equal to 1%. So if the if the spot rate curve is flat the nominal spread and z spread are exactly the same. However if we have a situation where the spot rate curve is steep then a difference will start showing up between the z spread and the nominal spread so the steeper the spot rate curve the higher the difference between the z spread and the nominal spread that's point number 1 and that's the most important point the second point is that the difference between z spread and nominal spread is greater for amortizing securities so recall amortizing securities are securities such as mortgage backed securities where the investor gets a equal amount every period and that amount includes both principal plus interest so if the investor is getting principal back soon then that also creates a difference between the z spread and the nominal spread now finally for this clip let's talk about option adjusted spread the option adjusted spread simply takes out the effect of embedded options 
Now, what was the embedded option in the callable bond I just talked about? The embedded option was the call option. So, we just said that the Z spread is equal to 146 basis points. And we also said that this Z spread is compensating an investor for credit risk, liquidity risk, option risk. Now let's say that out of this 146 basis points, 100 basis points is because of the extra credit risk. Let us say that 20 basis points is because of the extra liquidity risk and 26 basis points is the extra spread because of the option risk. Option risk again is the risk to the investor that the issuer will call this bond. Now what an option adjusted spread tries to do is it tries to explain what is the spread if we only consider credit risk and liquidity risk. In other words, we adjust out or remove the impact of option risk. So in this simplistic example, the option adjusted spread will be equal to 146 minus the impact of option risk. So the option adjusted spread is going to be 120 basis points. So this is pretty straightforward. Notice that for a callable bond, you will always have a situation where the Z spread is greater than the option adjusted spread. And if you have trouble understanding this, just pause this video and ponder over this example. And then what I want you to try and figure out is that for a puttable bond, what will be the situation? Will Z spread be greater than option adjusted spread or or less than option adjusted spread. So think about this and then you can check your uh, study notes or your uh, curriculum. But if you've understood what I've talked about here, you should be able to say whether the Z spread of a puttable spread, sp whether the Z spread for a puttable bond is more than or less than option adjusted spread. So we don't need to get too much more complicated than this. As long as you've understood these core points, you should be in good shape for the exam. Actually, uh, a final summary, and if you've been following along, all this should be familiar now. If we look at the three different spread measures, the nominal spread, the Z spread or the Z spread, and the option adjusted spread. So here is the basic point. With the nominal spread, the benchmark benchmark means that what is the what is it that we are comparing against so the nominal spread for a uh, for a corporate bond was 1.4% so we had the corporate bond which had a ytm of 7.4% the treasury had a ytm of 7 of i'm sorry 6% so the nominal spread was simply 7.4 minus 6, which was 1.4. So the benchmark was the treasury yield curve because 6% was the yield on the comparable treasury bond. And the nominal spread reflects credit risk, liquidity risk, and option risk. Then the issue with this was with the nominal spread was that it doesn't consider the term structure of spot rates and the other issue was that it does not consider the fact that interest rates can be volatile and hence cash flows can change zero volatility spread is slightly better because it does consider the term structure of spot rates and hence the benchmark isn't the yield curve but it is the treasury spot rate curve the zero volatility spread also reflects credit risk liquidity risk and option risk and finally, the option adjusted spread considers the treasury spot rate curve as the benchmark and it tells us how much an investor should expect or the, the spread that is based on credit risk and liquidity risk. It adjusts out the spread that can be attributed to option risk. And that is it for this segment.